The Music is Life podcast has our own merch now over on tpublic.com. Click the link below in the video description. Looking for some new threads? We got t-shirts, long sleeves, hoodies, crew neck sweatshirts, tank tops, baseball tees, and also clothes for kids and onesies for your little infant metalheads. Don't want clothes but love the Java? We got you covered with coffee mugs and travel mugs. Need protection for your electronics? We've also got phone and laptop cases. We've got everything you're looking for at the tpublic.com Music is Life podcast store. Use my link below for fast service. Thanks for your support. TerraNut is proud to offer you a natural nut bar chock full of healthy fats, minerals, and protein that meet your demands. Go to their website, www.terranut.com. You can order from them directly and they will ship it to you. Use my coupon code LUMAVS and you will get a 25% discount on your first order. TerraNut Superfood Snacks, www.terranut.com. Don't forget to use coupon code LUMAVS at checkout. Fuel your life. Looking for some new podcasts to listen to? Well, look no further than the Rat Style Review Network. Rat Style Review is taking over the podcast world with plenty of shows to choose from within their network of entertaining programming, including the flagship show Rat Style Review with Wayne Noon, Greg Noggle, and Lou Mavs, as well as occasional co-hosts Manny Mejias and James Lilquist. We also have the official Rat Style Review spinoffs, such as Album vs. Album, Screams from the Grave, where we discuss beloved yet forgotten hard rock and metal albums of the past, and a King Diamond podcast called This Broadcast Belongs to Them. We've also got Old Man Metal's Musings, Beyond Bushido, a podcast dedicated to pro wrestling and MMA with James Lilquist and Eric Adams. No relation to the guy from Manowar or the mayor of New York City. The Team Otoki podcast featuring Stradivarius and Avalon founding member Team Otoki. The BS Sessions with Mark and Jerry. Just the Cheese Please, a podcast dedicated to cheesy films of the 1980s with Tara J and Adam. And the Music is Live podcast with Lou Mavs. The Rats Eye Review Network is your go-to one-stop shop for the best podcasts out there today. Go to RatsEyeReview.com for more info. And to find out where you can find, follow, subscribe, and comment on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, and all streaming platforms. The Rats Eye Review Network. We're, We're taking over. Ladies and gentlemen, how do? <laughs> Ready and waiting for you now If it's a fight that you dare see We've acquired our strength through pain No more are we pathetic and we You are the reason why we claim That we've all become this way And I regret this prison that I've created for myself Who can it be? Who makes us cry? And won't save us from ourselves? I close my eyes Music is Live Podcast. This is your host, Lou Mavs. Check out everything you need to know about the show over at musicislivepodcast.com. I'm joined today by my special guest from Rockland County, New York. She's an independent singer-songwriter whose specialty is hard rock and heavy metal with killer powerful and melodic vocals. In my opinion, she brings a new and vital kick in the rear to a musical framework that was started with vocalists such as Ann Wilson of Heart, Amy Lee of Evanescence, Sharon Denadella with In Temptation, and Lizzie Hale of Hailstorm, and much more. From her first single in 2017, Taking Over, to her recent release, which is a cover of Only One from Yellow Cards 2003, Ocean Avenue, I am only excited for what the future will bring for this young talent, and I'm more than honored to have her on the podcast today. Please welcome Alex. How you doing? Hey, I'm doing great. How are you? Doing all right. I'm glad to have you on the show today. Are you right now in your studio? 
Yeah, I'm in my basement, <laughs> but this is my studio I put together. Like I have my monitors here, some like amps over here. That's actually back in the day. I was a dancer and um, I guess technically I still am, but I haven't really taken class in like a couple of years because of the pandemic. But uh, yeah, this is like, this was my dance studio. So I just like put up carpets and whatnot. Like you can see that's a mirror. Like those are all mirrors. I had like a ballet bar like, uh -huh. dancer. <laughs> But I, I mean, I guess I still use it like as a studio and like I do work out over there. I just kind of like roll up the rug and then like use all that space down there. You can see my yoga stuff is just chilling <laughs> in the corner. <laughs> Nothing wrong with it. Hey, full disclosure, I'm in my den. Look, it's, it's a, it's, it's That's a, right it's, That's, this is a curtain. Yeah. It's a black curtain and yeah. behind it is my China cabinet. Nobody wants to see my China cabinet. Oh, well, you don't know. <laughs> Yeah, maybe if I was on an Antiques Road show, but I'm not. I was, just saying that. I was like, I mean, Antiques Road show, you know. <laughs> I love that show. Oh, great. I heard you first through Instagram. You popped up in my feed back when I joined a couple of years ago, and I really took to what you were doing. And I was wow, like, I have you. to get Alex on the show. I really do. My first question for you is something that I usually ask all of my guests. That is what got them interested in music in their formative years. And I'd like to pose the same question to you. You know, I grew up doing theater. Um, my mom was very musical. I started singing when I was six. So I started doing theater. And yeah, I was like six when I took my first voice lesson. Just kind of was like always surrounded by it. And then doing theater just was like a huge influence in my life. And then, like I said, my mom uh, used to sing. Well, she's all kind of sing. She definitely like influenced me to sing. Yeah, it just kind of like became a part of me. It did mention in your bio on your website that you were in theater. I could definitely hear that in your vocal delivery. I hear a little bit of Adina Menzel and, mm. you know, Again, amazing usage of dynamics within your songs. I think it's impressive that you were able to transfer that theater delivery into a rock and metal style and sound organic in the process. I mentioned Sharon from Within Temptation. She's probably one of the few that I know that could really do it. Add you to the list as well. And I say that as an objective listener, you said it was your mother that got you into theater. She did theater when she was younger and she uh, she still sings and like she plays piano and like my family kind of did theater. And I guess I kind of like grew into it. So yeah, I started doing theater when I was like six or seven. Any particular favorite theater performer? Well, Adina Menzel was a huge influence growing up. So I love that you said that. I was like, oh my God. Okay. So yeah, she heard like Shoshana Bean. I was a huge Wicked fan. I just love Steven Schwartz's music. When I was a kid, I was like, like, that's the end goal. And then I stopped doing theater. <laughs> I feel cheated. I didn't get to see her in Rent when I saw Rent. But I think by that point, that was like 2007. She was way past that at that point. I think I actually think she was doing Wicked at that time. I saw her in Wicked. I saw the original cast. And um, I didn't I, was, I didn't see Rent either. But at least like the Rent movie, like she was in it. So it's like, I kind of feel like I saw her in it. Oh, Maureen, how we love you. <laughs> Hi, Maureen. <laughs> that's one of my wife's favorite musicals so uh you know she dragged me to see it thankfully we actually saw it with anthony rapp and adam pascal they actually returned because this is when rent was leaving so they actually returned for a couple of months i didn't get to see the show but i know they came back like before it closed i was like oh man before the pandemic started we were going to broadway shows all the time we both have theater backgrounds as well i know looking at me it doesn't show it but uh i wasn't pit band for many growing up so that was fun nice. not an actor by any means whatsoever but i am a musician by hobby <laughs> that's awesome thank you i also have to give you credit on your tiktok and your instagram you also post dance videos you're very graceful dancer. I mean, is that all from theater or did you take dance as well growing yeah. up? Yeah. When I was younger, I thought I was going to be a ballerina. So up until I was like 13. With your YouTube channel and also you post clips of it on your Instagram, you've posted a lot of great covers all over your social media, which I congratulate you on having over 3.8 thousand subscribers on YouTube. Thanks. That's not an easy feat. I've heard them. You definitely nailed them. Everything from Dark Horse by Katy Perry to... I Am The Fire by Hailstorm, and even a version of I Refuse from Five Finger Death Punch. That blew me away because I was like, no one does that. But I have to admit my favorite cover, I'm a huge Asking Alexandria fan. So when you did Moving On, I was like, holy crap, she's awesome.
when it comes to your covers, I got to ask you, like, what is your process when it comes to reimagining them, like in your vision? And when you choose them, do you make it a point to go sort of against the grain of expectation? Like, do you purposely avoid making them sound like what they already do sound like? Yes. Yeah, so um, it depends. So I do work with a friend of mine, Chris. And when we do like the hard rock covers, um, we try to like, depending on the song, we want either pay homage to it or like make a metal rock version of like a pop song. Um, there are times like with the Asking Alexandria cover, um, I heard that song and I just pictured like an orchestra in my head. And I was like, this would be kind of cool to like totally go left field with it. And um, I actually, <laughs> technically that was my left. <laughs> We're on Zoom, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> What's left is right, so it's okay. <laughs> so I thought that would be kind of cool. So I think it really depends on the song and it depends on, you know, how I hear it. But yeah, that definitely was one of my favorite songs. Yeah, their first three albums, in my opinion, are great. I have heard a couple of people cover the first track off the first album. It's like, okay, every emo boy is going to try to cover this, but let me hear you do something different. And yeah. you definitely did that with Moving On. So I really got to congratulate you on that. Um, you. To pick any Asking Alexandria song is not an easy feat because Danny just goes all out when he sings. Oh, yeah. And I'm just glad he's back in the band again. Because only, I, I think only. I forgot, I forgot he wasn't in it for a second. I don't know. Everyone else did too. <laughs> it's like I would listen to the songs and be like, this isn't him. But they're not bad. It's just, you know, it's not Danny. No, I agree. The Black was not a bad album. It's just Danny's the voice. Yeah. You know, like certain singers belong with certain bands. And that's where Danny belongs. The song of yours that made me a fan was This War. concept video the melody the production i actually think that's something that you would probably expect from an artist who signed to a label like sumerian but the truth is you're completely independent and for me that's refreshing to interview someone outside of the industry system because it's proof that what an artist does to get themselves noticed and successful is more important than what a label can provide but every artist is different and i respect that they each have their own take on it what is it about being an independent artist that you prefer as opposed to being on a label or is the end goal to be on a label? The end goal to me is to be on a label because I feel like it also depends on the label. I feel like they can do more things than I can. But the nice thing about being independent is I can literally do whatever I want and no one tells me no. <laughs> uh, so everything that I have that every vision I have, like I can execute it, you know, and I, I, like I said, like what, what I wear, the, the lyrics, the content, like everything is something that I did. So it's a very rewarding feeling. And it, like you said that, you know, you were, you liked that song, you were a fan of that song. And like, you said that it was like on the same tier as like someone who's like signed. And that's like the, one of the biggest compliments. Cause I'm out here, like, you know, trying to do everything by myself. And it's, it's, really cool to hear that it's kind of it's on the same tier as people that I look up to so I really appreciate that thank you being independent it, it is hard because you can only the you know audience is only so wide so the fact that like you're like this right now is amazing because now like you, I'm being introduced to your audience and there's just kind of like you know growing and expanding and I appreciate it so much that you know you want to interview me and you want to you know, help me. Like, that's amazing. So I really do appreciate it. I know you just performed at Dingbats in New Jersey. I'm sorry I missed that show. I would have loved to come down. I know that you're in Rockland County and with pandemic restrictions dying down a little bit, you're out performing again, which is great. I'm hoping like you could come to Long Island and do a show out here. I know that there's some venues like 89 North or Mulcahy's. They book artists that would be riding your wheelhouse. So you know, it'd be cool to see you there, specifically Long Island, where I'm from. I'm sure they would love to see what you do on stage. That would be cool. I performed at Revolution like the summer before it closed. I, yeah. and I, that was my favorite venue. <laughs> I know. And it was weird because they were posting something on Instagram as if they were like still open. And I was like, do they reopen? But I don't think that they didn't reopen, right? They're nope. like closed. <laughs> but there yeah. is another venue in Amityville called the Amityville Music Hall. So okay. they they actually book a lot of death metal bands and hardcore bands and e 
emo bands but uh, <laughs> i love amityville music hall i saw a bunch of like my friends play like i one band i interviewed the ice cold killers they're a they're a punk band and they played there and they did a great job like i mentioned 89 north and mulcahy's would probably be something that i think you should definitely go for i know that not saying that white chapel sounds like you but white chapel actually just played there last year and they played to a packed house so you know uh-huh. that would be cool for you to jump on a bill there i definitely yeah i, I- I should reach out to them. <laughs> the White Chapel or okay, he's not <laughs> both. <laughs> Why not? Absolutely not. Yeah, yellow. <laughs> Very cool. So I would say that your talent definitely shows in everything that you write, not just cover, but your original material. In your case, I would say that I think your presentation is equally as important as your art. What I like is that you promote a different image of yourself with all of your releases. Basically, I love what you do with your hair. It's awesome. I, I, I don't know if you got this from the Joker or not, but I love the green and purple. Joker is my favorite villain. I did an entire episode based on the Joker. That just shows you what a fanboy I am. It kind of gives a menacing image with an angelic delivery. So there's that perfect dichotomy there in terms of presentation and performance. When planning your releases, do you do your music ideas first and then you base your image around that? Or... Do you come up with an idea presentation first and then base your music around that? Well, I think I'm actually going to keep this hair for a very long time because- it's... Please do, because it's awesome. <laughs> yeah, I definitely have fallen in love with this. So, I mean, definitely the music comes first and then see where it, it takes me or like how I feel and how I like the reaction that I feel from the finished product. And then everything gets kind of, it's based around the music. So definitely- goes music, then visual, then video or concept or whatnot. What did make you go for the purple green? So my hair was already purple at the time. It was like a lavender, like a light lavender. And honestly, I was tired of bleaching it every five seconds. So I saw this girl had like teal on one side. It was like lavender on the other. So I was like, well, green's a contrasting color. And then huge fan of the Joker, the whole Bat family. So I'm like, I always joke. I'm like the product of like Harley Quinn and Joker's like bastard child (laughs) (laughs) because like i have her personality but i look like him it is to laugh huh mr j mr j we have a problem (laughs) (laughs) huge fan (laughs) so that definitely was inspired i also love beetlejuice and in the cartoon and even just like in general like his colors are uh green and purple so that's right. I forgot about the old Beetlejuice cartoon. That was a fun show. I know. I miss that. A lot of stuff from the 80s and early 90s that are gone that I miss. Who, who, fucking who? That's okay. We're not here to talk nostalgia. We're here to talk Alex. So let's move right along. My last goodbye. So when I heard that, at first I thought, hmm, normally over a song like this, I'd hear screaming. <laughs> this time around, I'm hearing singing, and it seems to be that you kind of bridged a gap between metalcore and melodic metal. So congrats. You've managed to solve a problem that so many people have issues with where they say, "Uh, I like the music, but I wish they'd sing, not scream. So congrats. You did it. What was the impetus for you to bridge that gap and write and release and record? Thank you. Uh, that music because I and really, I, really I, I every every yeah. time I've played like in flames or soil work for people they're like I love the music but I hate the screaming it's like come on man come on <laughs> um it was definitely accidental uh, like I write everything on piano first and then it just got heavier and I don't scream but I was like well I'm just gonna keep the vocals that I had when I wrote it on piano and like I had more intention for, for it to be a little bit more aggressive and I like, wanted like that double bass like I wanted it to be like just heavy and I thought I was like drums like go heavy guitar i want that solos i just want it to be just like in your face (laughs) yeah it just kind of accidentally happened but uh, the funny thing is i had written it so like not until like i think i released like a year and a half later after i wrote it because i wasn't sure what to do with it because i was like i don't know if it's if it works i just decided to release it it worked (laughs) (laughs) thank you i'm glad is that how you base all your ideas you start from piano and grow from that yeah so um I don't really play guitar. Not well. Um, I write everything on piano and then I go in pro tools and like just build around it. Like I'll add like synth pads and strings and 
like MIDI drums and that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, so most of my stuff does start off on piano, not necessarily meaning it's like a ballad, but like it definitely starts like organically from the piano. No, hey, I mean, a lot of classic songwriters from the past who are known for being guitarists or bassists have started the basis for their songs on piano and, you know, kind of grown from there. So no, that that's a very traditional way to approach songwriting. So no, nothing nothing to, to to laugh at at all. I think that's that that's great because there's definite evolution from where it starts from piano to what the final product is. And that's that's pretty awesome. Your bandmates definitely add to the sound of your music. I wanted to give you a moment to discuss who your band is and give them some shine. Franklin Elliott is your guitar player. And if you don't want me to mention it on the show, I won't. But he is your boyfriend, too, right? Yes, yes. We can mention that. Okay. Your boyfriend is a guitar player, Franklin Elliott. He's extremely talented, by the way. Dude rips. And I say that from one fellow guitar player to another. Who else is in your band? So I have Zachy Ali, who is my drummer. Um, he also has produced um, most of my songs, um, which is amazing. And I also have Brandon, which is amazing. And he is actually playing guitar for me now. Um, so I have both of them. But right now, Frank's not playing live at the moment because he is in another band and um, they are playing so often and it's like hard to get the schedules lined up. Um, so that's that. And I do not have a bass player at the moment. So either Zachy or even Brandon or Frank or will play bass. And then we have bass backing tracks if I don't have a bass player for the show, which some people like get so angry <laughs> about that. I, but um. You know, it, like I said, you know, it's hard live, especially in a pandemic and whatnot, like trying to get everybody together. But hopefully things are moving way past that. I get that. I mean, it definitely makes it to find someone to be a full time bass player, to have them rehearse and learn the songs. I mean, obviously, that's very time consuming. But, you know, as anyone who knows being in the band, it's dedication and it's applying, you know, your craft to not just help the sound of the music sound great when in a live setting, but also to enhance the performance. I hope you can find a bass player soon. So, you know, that would be cool. Well, The thing is like, I do want a bass player, but it's also, I mean, everyone in my band already can play bass. So I mean, it does work um, the way it is right now. And it's also hard because a lot of people are not so many other bands. So it's, it's hard to find people that are not in like, even my, my, uh, you know, Brandon's and he has another band and my drummers and like three other four, like four bands in total. So like, it's hard to find, you know, people <laughs> that are just in like one band, but um, I'm very fortunate that I have a lot of musician friends and I do have a lot of friends that play bass and have helped me out. Um, my friend Meta came and helped him play the festival. He played a show in, um, where is it? Debonair in New Jersey. So I have people that, that, you know, I can call on, which is nice. They can help me out. <laughs> That's wonderful. But hey, guys, everyone out there, Stick with one band and help it grow, please. Don't be whoring yourselves out to everybody. It's not fair. Well, it's also different, like if you're playing different instruments in different bands. So that's also another thing. Like my drummer is a guitarist in another band. Yeah. <laughs> all these multifaceted musicians after all. <laughs> Why is everyone so talented? Go play the kazoo or something. <laughs> or the triangle. Oh, everyone needs oh. a good triangle player. Do just in the corner, like ding. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> I had a friend. She was like, I want to be on stage. And I was like, I'll give you the triangle. She's like, I would do it. And I was like, okay, maybe. Give her cowbell. Cowbell is always a good one. More cowbell. That's <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. Okay. <laughs> oh, by the way, funny story. I did see Blue Oyster Cult live. They did a free show in Massapequa, which is a town near me. And that was their last song of the night. So, of course, what happens? An entire parade of cowbell players as that song is going on. I'm like, you people are ridiculous. Oh, I love it. Oh, man, I wish I was there. Really? I'm going to add, well, because it'd be funny. I think I'm going to add cowbell to my next song. It's just somewhere in it. Just like, and then in the video, just someone in the corner, like, doing it. For the record, we're recording this on April Fool's Day, so I don't know if she's trolling me or not, but I'll give her the benefit of the doubt. Wait, we're in April oh my god what did you forget it's April 1st <laughs> oops okay well I gotta go play some pranks on people now <laughs> what time is it I'm a little late to it the game but that's okay 
Uh, that's know. fine. I'm, I'm, I'm already seeing stupid April Fool's jokes all over, all over Facebook. I'm just like, oh, leave me alone. <laughs> I, you know what? I might have, and I just didn't notice. I just scroll through things. I just assume, first of all, everything on the internet is not real to begin with. I don't believe much. But yeah, I'm definitely going to try to pr- prank on somebody now. This wasn't a prank somebody pulled, but somebody did post something funny today. It was a picture of the, of the Ninja Turtles saying, hey, Mr. T, what month is it? And then it's him with April O'Neil and he goes, it's April Fool's. Boo! <laughs> okay, I like that. That's so cheesy. I, 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 between that and the Justin Timberlake, it's going to be May things. It's like, uh, <laughs> these things never die. <laughs> and I mean, talk about memes, um, the whole Will Smith thing. <laughs> there. <laughs> you know. One- I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, just like the memes just like took over like my entire every feed, TikTok, Instagram, whatever. It was just, but they were amazing, but they were just like, there were a lot. You know, that's actually a good question. That that wasn't one that was on my list. But for me, as someone who does, you know, perform now and then, the idea of anyone coming on stage and assaulting the person on stage, I think it sets a really bad precedent because there's only one thing that I think of when an incident like that occurs. And I can't help but be reminded of Dimebag Daryl when he was killed on stage. It kind of makes me, I don't wanna say afraid, but concerned for comedians, musicians, whatever. That's something that Will Smith should have never done. And if that's gonna get me hate for saying it, I'll die on that hill. Fuck you, Malaka! No, I agree. And like the fact that nothing happened, like he went up. First of all, I didn't watch the Oscars. I just YouTubed that scene because everyone's talking about it. The fact that he got up there, whether or not it was staged, I don't think it was staged, but he got up there, he smacked him, then verbally threatening him. And then nothing happened. Like you said, it's concerning because now it's like people think, okay, well, Will Smith did it. I can do it. And it's like, no. So hopefully he has some sort of repercussions for this because that was messed up. Someone tried doing that to me while I was playing guitar and they tried to assault me. I take my guitar off him and whack him across the head for it. Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! I'm giving everyone fair warning if you do that when I'm on stage or if any of my friends are, we will retaliate. Oh yeah. I train in Muay Thai. I won't fuck you up. (laughs) Got a bad case of bad motherfucker syndrome. You heard it. Alex trains in Muay Thai. Yep. She'll fuck you up. Everybody got that? Public service announcement. <laughs> a new meme. <laughs> Shame on you, Will Smith. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, and then his kid was like, said something and like, that's how we do it or something. And I was like, dude, no. Like, do not encourage this behavior. The younger generation sometimes, I feel like, just don't understand Jaden said that I don't know if that was real now because now I'm second guessing it but I'm pretty sure I saw it on Twitter and this is why I stay away from Twitter (laughs) Twitter's like the toxic hive mind of all social media if I could cut it loose I would but unfortunately it's a necessary evil yes yes it is thank you for sharing your opinion on that I appreciate it as I admitted to you before when I was in my 20s I was playing in bands that were playing with hardcore metal and emo bands and uh, you know I never really got into emo as a genre I never understood what the name meant I always just called it punk pop at the time there was drive through records and vagrant records and you know they had some great bands on there but as a whole it seems like you know, once that became popular and you had all these other bands that were coming out in that wake, it's like, oh, great. Another sound alike. And I thought Yellow Card was like one of the few bands that was completely different. And that's not just because they had a violin player, but because yeah. they could actually write good songs. Yeah. I remember the song Only One when I first heard it. I, I loved it. And when I heard your version, for me, I prefer it to yellow cars like I thought I really thought it was like a step beyond what they did like you know you totally made it your own so congrats on that yeah that was definitely one of my favorite songs like you know that and Ocean Avenue is the other one you know like those are songs I grew up with so um I remember thinking about songs to cover and I was like, only one was always like, it hit me like right here. And I was like, okay, like, yeah, we could definitely have to cover that one. What stuck out for me was the delivery and the arrangement. What was it about the song Only One that you did with your friend Chris that made you want to do it? And 
What's the reception been like so far? So far, it's been really positive. People do like that. And a lot of people are like, oh, this song, like this brings me back or like this is an emotional song because I feel like it is an emotional song. So I think, you know, when I tried to when I was singing it, I was trying to like convey that feeling that like I first of all felt when I listened to it. And then just really what the lyrics are, because it's it's a powerful song. And Chris arranged the whole thing and he absolutely kills it every single time. We have a couple other covers coming out too. Every time, like he just, he hears things differently. I don't even know how he does it, but so he does all the music and then I do the vocals. Well, that's a very good duo between you two. So, you know, I can't wait to see what else you both put out. With the pandemic closures subsiding, it definitely appears that bands are getting the bugs to go out and perform again which as i mentioned before you recently just played dang bats in clifton new jersey you performed in new york as you mentioned revolution in amityville rest in peace new jersey connecticut pennsylvania massachusetts do you have any touring plans in the future i don't at the moment full disclosure touring is so expensive like i don't think you know a lot of people that aren't in the music industry don't realize like how much goes into touring you know between like the van and gas and places to stay and just whatnot. Um, so I think it doesn't make sense for me to tour at this moment. Doing some shows here and there, I think is a better option. Unless there is, you know, something I can jump on that would be beneficial to me, more so financially. You know, if I had the budget, I'd be going everywhere. But um, I think where I am right now, it's just, just trying to like build a fan base and like everything is on social media right now. So just trying to like do what I can through social media and then hopefully at some point, Tour. I think that's a good attitude to have. I wasn't insinuating that you should just drop oh, no, what no. you're doing and live a life of poverty. I did it for two years where we work full time jobs, save our money. At the time, I had a 91 Ford Explorer. We would jump in that with a trailer hitch and we would play at any shitty hole in the wall that would have us. And uh, yeah, we realized that was not conducive either to our wallets or our health. It's uh, it's, it's rough, especially with gas prices now being what they are. They're like seven. What was it? I was like six dollars in L.A. I saw a photo and I was like, oh, no, definitely not a good time to tour. I don't think. Thank God we don't live in L.A. No offense for multiple reasons, but definitely that one. By me, it's like four fifteen, like around there, which is doable. <laughs> I also have a um, Jeep Commander with a Hemi in it, and that gets like 15 miles per gallon. I had to fill up twice within three days. Oh, wow. It was bad. I also, I'm always running around, so that didn't help, but yeah. Oof. I hear you. My 91 Ford Explorer, that went eight miles to the gallon. Oh, no. And I'm sure with the trailer, it probably was like four. Three. But we had a nice Eddie Bauer interior, so that was very comfortable. <laughs> What other future releases do you have coming up? Me and Chris are doing a rock cover of the song River by Bishop Briggs. So I don't know when that's going to be out, but at some point um, we are in discussion of some other songs we're going to release. Um, I am currently working on another single and it's funny because I feel like I keep saying I'm like, I'm working on a single, but I really am. It's just, you know, life gets in the way and then just it's hard to like sit there and like finalize it. And then because I keep doing all these covers, too, and then like little Instagram clips and whatnot, it just takes up a lot of time. And I do work. I have a job and then I do like side jobs. I'm also like a makeup artist on the side. So I just I'm always doing something. So it's very hard for me to like sit there and just focus on something because I always have like something else to do. Hopefully, fingers crossed, by like the next week it'll be done and then I can go into the studio and like really record it. As far as full-time jobs, yeah, I mean, I, I have one too. So I totally get it. By the way, there, there is something I just want to say about how awesome Alex is. I was supposed to do this interview with her a week ago or two weeks ago and um, something came up where I had to take care of my daughter and she was completely understanding of it and she didn't blow me off. She said she was happy to reschedule. So I just wanted to really point out that this is a, a genuine person that I have on the show today, which makes me even happier to have her on. So I, I just wanted to uh, mention that to the audience and just, you know, just say that I'm grateful that, uh, you know, you still gave Music is Live podcast a chance to uh to interview you so thank you of course like i get life happens and like you know i have no problem rescheduling um i just hope everything was okay that's all with your original music and your cover music and everything that you post what would you personally like fans to take away from 
either your music or your live performance. What is your end goal for the fans when they either see or hear Alex? Well, I think, you know, if you hear it, like any of my music or covers, I want you to really like feel the song and not just be like, okay, like that sounds cool. Like I want you to like feel the music, like the lyrics, the content, like just like go kind of on a journey. The last show I played, I had people tell me that it was like enchanting. Like they went on a journey and they were just like encapsulated with the performance. And I just want people to feel, to feel shit, you know, like I want you to, to have an experience and hopefully a good one, but you know, I want people to connect to my lyrics personally that I write or even the covers that I do. This is all about connection and feelings, which is funny because I'm not really an emotional person, <laughs> but I, I want people to feel things. Your delivery, your performance, your uh, presentation, it got my attention. And if it gets my attention, I'm sure it'll get a lot more people on your side. So yeah, I definitely wish you all the best with that. Finally, if people want to find out more about you and your music, and if they want to be your new bass player, where can they find more out about Alex on the internet? So you can find everything on my website. That's official Alex, A-L-Y-X-X.com. Um, there'll be links to my music, uh, all my socials. And I'm usually on Instagram and TikTok more than anything. I do a Facebook, but I don't forget that I have that sometimes. And don't we all? I feel it's funny. There are people that are like diehard Facebook fans. Like they just, that's all they use. So, you know, I have to make sure I keep up to date with that, but everything is going to be at officialalex.com or I think also Linktree slash official Alex. I just started one of those things. Last but not least, we have our lightning round yeah. where <laughs> I'm going to ask you questions and you're going to give quick answers and <laughs> You know, it'll be fun. I promise. I just the okay. weird things that end up in my head. So I'm just excited to see what I'm saying. All right. Favorite song to relax with? Any Brian Eno song. Brian Eno? Yeah. Cool. Favorite song to get amped with? Anything by Amaranth or Five Finger Death Punch. Okay. Your Desert Island album. And if you need more than one, I'll give you three. One X by Three Days Grace. Fallen by Evanescence, maybe. Dear Agony by Breaking Benjamin. That's a good one. 80s metal or 90s alternative? 80s metal. Iron Maiden or Judas Priest? Judas Priest. Very nice. Yeah. Van Halen or Van Hagar? Van Halen. Yes! Another Dave fan. Awesome. Uh, it was funny. We were talking about like the singers and I was going to mention like when David Lee Roth and Sammy Hagar is like, to me, it's still David Lee Roth, but you know. I respect that. Def Leppard or Motley Crue? Ooh, Def Leppard. Alex rocks. I like her. She's <laughs> I awesome. Like, I thought like, was that the right answer? <laughs> you give me all, give me, those are all my favorite answers. So that's great. Arenas or clubs? Ooh, arenas. Metallica or Guns N' Roses? I gotta go Metallica. All right. And I mean, yeah, yeah, Metallica. Cool. And finally, studio or stage? Stage. All right. Very cool. That was it. A quick, painless, easy 10 question lightning round. You got all the right answers in my opinion. So thank you. Yes. I won. What do I win? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, my eternal respect. So <laughs> I, I will take it. I'll take it. Oh, thank you, Alex. Once again, I thank you for taking for taking time out of your day to come onto the podcast. I had a blast having you on and asking you a bunch of questions. And, you know, uh, my takeaway from this is that I hope people really get turned on to your music and the fact that I truly think that you are one of the best unsigned talents out there, both uh, vocally and songwriting wise. I think you're awesome. And I'm very blessed that you took time out to come onto the show today. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you having me on the show. It really, like I said, you know, being independent and like trying to get yourself out there and the fact that like, you know, brought, you brought me on the show and now I can be introduced to your audience. I think that's amazing. To find out more about the Music is Live podcast, check us out over at musicislivepodcast.com. Also check us out over at linktree.com. That's linktr.ee forward slash music is live podcast. And don't forget to check out our parent network, Rats Eye Review over at ratsireview.com. Once again, Alex, thank you so much for coming on Music is Live podcast. Thank and you. remember, all art is valid. Have a good night.